Hello and welcome to the broadcast today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you and uh, we just are excited about what God is doing in our, our lives. Uh, you know, I say I'm, I'm excited. I am excited because of the call of God, because God has been faithful. In, um, since I was a child, God's been faithful to me. And I really appreciate what God does in our lives. Cheryl showed with me in the studio helping with, with the technical stuff. We're basically a two-man show here. Uh, but we're moving forward and we're believing God uh, to provide means uh, for a facility. Our, our internet is still uh, very poor here. So if you experience some, please forgive the, uh, the um, internet. But... Uh, Listen to what God's saying. The, the audio seems to be doing okay in many cases, but um, listen to what God's saying and hear what the Lord is doing uh, in this time. I'm in a series uh, that I am calling the Missions of the Church. And uh, I want to, uh, we possibly will finish today, but I don't want to rush. So if we get finished today, fine. If not, we'll come back next week and uh, share with you some more. Uh, on this uh, subject and on this topic. But before we start, I want us to pray. I want us to give God glory for the Word of God and glory for uh, His presence in the earth. There's a real, I feel a real, um, uh, a real intenseness of the, the passion of the Lord right now. I'm uh, uh, reaching out for mercy. And uh, I, I, I sense maybe when that happens, I, uh, uh, it's because somebody is watching or somebody's reaching out that needs a touch from God. Well, he has it for you today. He has it right here on this uh, on this uh, broadcast. He has it right here through the anointing that God has given me as a prophet of God. And uh, I want to ask you, Lord, uh, that, that you just call on the name of the Lord as we go into the message today. Uh, we, we, I can't uh, type on the comments and all, but if you're, if you're here... Uh, if you're watching, please uh, let us know you're watching. If you're responding to the prayers that we are sending out, please let us know and testify of what God's doing uh, in, in your life. We appreciate what the Lord is doing. Uh, so right now, by the power of the Spirit, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask the Lord to touch uh, you and touch those that are watching, whether it's live or whether it's by, by video later. The anointing is the same, but I just really feel the passion of the Lord reaching out right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you today in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus, uh, the one true God. I thank you, Lord, that you uh, minister grace and mercy to the hearer, God. I feel such passion reaching out and to those that have uh, recently lost loved ones and those that are going through trials and tests. God, we don't magnify the trials and tests. We don't want to give any place to the enemy. But, God, we, we do want to be, be as you were because your word says you were moved by the feeling of our infirmities. And so right now, Father, those that are suffering infirmities, feeling weaknesses, that are feeling uh, like they need a touch from God, I ask you, Lord, that you just minister to them today. God, I give you glory. I give you thanks for what you're doing right now. And by the power of the Spirit, God, reach out and touch and heal uh, those. Uh, if you're watching right now and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, just just lift your hands and say, Lord, come into my life. Come into my heart. Receive me. I believe with, with my heart. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And when you do that, you're born again. Now you can see the kingdom of God. You can enter into the kingdom of God. So as we go forward today, let's hear the word of God together. All right. Uh, let me just give a, just a couple of minutes review. Real quickly, when we started out uh, on, on part one, we started talking about uh, the primary mission of the church that, that the Lord gave to uh, uh, the apostles before his ascension uh, uh, back to the Father uh, was to go into all the world. And you can find that in, uh, I think we used Mark 16, verse 14 through 20. Uh, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Uh, he that believeth in his baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And he goes on. Uh, it goes on and says, "These signs shall follow them that believe." Now, there's. Uh, if you're part of the church, I want you to understand something. Because there are miracles that come as signs of the gospel, and there are those in the church that has, have gifts of the spirit. There, uh, they sometimes seem to work the same. 
but there are two different impartations. One works uh, because uh, because of the preaching of the gospel. One works today as we preach the gospel uh, on this video on 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 your uh, on Facebook Live uh, or on YouTube or Twitter or wherever you are listening to it at. Uh, as we preach the gospel, uh, then there are signs for. Uh, those that believe, whenever you believe, can I tell you, enter into the supernatural uh, presence of the Lord. You enter into a place where you can begin to receive uh, the power of the living God. So today as we, uh, as we preach the gospel, I want you to be open and let God bring forth those signs and, and wonders, those healing, uh, healing deliverance. Uh, if you're tormented by spirits, tormented by, uh, by things... Uh, trying to, to discourage you by oppression, uh, can I tell you, you can cast them out by the preaching of the gospel. Uh, the, the, other, the other thing is to the church, to the members of the church, uh, is what we call the gifts of the Spirit. Um, and they, they come to believers, they come, they operate through uh, believers uh, that are in the church, members in the church, and they operate because we desire, the scripture says, desire earnestly the best gifts, and, and there's a desire to operate in those gifts. Now, there are, they are so similar uh, in their function sometimes, uh, but uh, you don't have to desire the gift to operate whenever, uh, whenever you believe and hear the voice of God, hear the, the gospel, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then God begins to uh, minister, uh, minister supernatural signs and wonders in your life. Now I'm not, I'm not teaching on signs and wonders, but it's important that you understand that. Then on part two, we to told you about how Jesus told Peter uh, to, uh, if you love me, Peter, feed my sheep. This is after. Uh, uh, this is before his, his ascension, but it's after his, uh, his resurrection. And he says, um, meets Peter there after they had dined. And, and he said, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. Now, he just fed them natural food, but he's talking about spiritual food. We went on to tell you uh, over um, uh, over in uh, 1 Peter 5 and 2 uh, that uh, Peter addressed the same thing to the brethren. Feed the flock of God. So uh, what's he talking about feeding? Feeding the Word of God, something that is tangible, something that will cause us to grow as the body of Christ. Uh, I believe it's time that we as the church get about the Father's business and begin to, uh, begin to minister uh, the, 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 the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was just reading, uh, I'm going to go here earlier, earlier than I had planned, but I was just reading uh, an article talking about uh, a book called The Dark Agenda and it's written by uh, a Jew uh, called David uh, Horowitz and uh, he, he talks about the agenda of, of uh, the, the left and the agenda of the media the agenda in the schools all over to uh, destroy Christianity and Judaism and how do they do that? They, the, the same way the, there's nothing, the enemy doesn't come up with anything new uh, whenever there was uh, in Egypt. They were trying to stop that uh, Savior from coming uh, that they knew was coming because the Word of God had said it. Uh, when Moses uh, had come on the scene, they were killing the children. Whenever Jesus came, uh, they killed the children, and that's what's uh, happening. They're trying to get to uh, and and bring a message in the schools and in different places uh, that will destroy the faith. Uh, from here on out. But I'm going to tell you what. Uh, it looks like, if you just look on the surface, church, listen to me. If you just look on the surface, they're more successful uh, at spreading their uh, their message. It's not a gospel. It's not good news. At spreading their message than the church has been. The church has got to awaken. The church has got to stand up and realize the missions that we have. We First of all, we've got to get back to being evangelical, not just, just in name, but indeed in reaching out, um, and we've got also got to get back to strengthening the body of Christ. Feed my sheep, Peter. Feed the flock of God. Feed those. Feed them what? The, the, the substance of the Word of God. Feed them with 
uh, with uh, what Jesus has already taught us and what Jesus is saying. Now, today I want to go into part three. And I know I took a little bit of time, but, but it's so important. I'm stirred in my spirit today. Uh, there, there's almost a, a, a grieving for the church uh, because we have left our first love in many cases. We've left that place where, uh, where we are, have been effective uh, in the preaching of the gospel. And I, I believe it's time that uh, we begin to shake ourselves, uh, hallelujah, and begin to allow God to bring us forth uh, in a great and a mighty anointing that the Word of God uh, can come forth. Now, we're going to go on in today, and I'm going to look at, and, and as I told you on part one, every mission of the church ties back into that first mission, to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, and whenever we preach the gospel, things happen. Things begin to change. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Uh, then we, we begin to, to nourish one another, lift up one another, feed one another the word of God. Uh, and as we feed one another, then there's a strength that comes to us, and we see God doing uh, uh, doing His work. See, the, I told you in the, in, in, in the first uh, lesson, as they went, then God worked with them. And see, that's what we need today. We need God to work with us. That Lose this mindset that we can do it all by ourselves. Lose this mindset... Uh, that we don't we we don't need uh, there there used to be an old song back whenever I was in my early twenties they used to sing uh, me and Jesus got our own thing going we don't need anybody to tell us what but you know it's true that we need to hear the voice of God but we do need one another we cannot cut ourselves off from the body of Christ and we can't cut ourselves off from the mission that God set before the church today. Now, in, uh, in Matthew, the 10th chapter, Jesus actually, this is while Jesus still is in his ministry, and he's training the apostles. He's training those disciples that are with him. Uh, actually, he's training disciples. They have not yet been called apostles. Uh, and, and he's training disciples. And uh, in the 10th chapter, beginning with the 7th verse of Matthew, uh, it's also in Luke and John, I think, but... Uh, but whenever we, we see what he did here, he's, he's training, and he says this. He says, and, and as you go, preach the kingdom of God. I preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, an aspect, many times we don't understand the kingdom. Uh, and some are... You know, are so caught up in preaching uh, the gospel and salvation that they don't go on and teach the kingdom of God. Well, the kingdom of God is how God operates in the earth. The kingdom of God uh, is activated by the preaching of the gospel. Uh, preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and watch what he says in, in verse 8. He says, heal the sick. Now, I'm preaching on, on missions of the church. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. And there's a key there in when you're preaching the kingdom. When you have received something from God, when you have received mercy and grace, then you are empowered, you are anointed. I'm talking to you. Uh, you are anointed to, uh, to give out mercy and grace. You're anointed to send forth the power of the Spirit, and allow God uh, to, to do these things, to heal the sick. Now, before he said heal the sick, sometimes I hear people say, well, I've got a healing ministry. Well, you, you may have uh, one of the gifts of the Spirit, which is healing, uh, and that's fine. Uh, but the, the healing the cleansing of the lepers, the raising of the dead, the casting out devils, come with the preaching of the gospel. See, tying right back into our original uh, mission of the church, tying right back into the gospel. Uh, but it does give instruction here. Jesus does give instruction. 
Whenever you go preach, you should expect God to move in these areas. Uh, I do. I expect God to move in these areas. Now, we are, we are in such a skeptical time when people are so skeptical because there have been abuses of, of some of this stuff. There's been uh, abuses of what we've called television evangelists. There's been abuses of, of uh, people who tried to fake it. People say, used to say, fake it till you make it. No, don't fake it till you make it. Because if you're constantly faking it, how are you going to know when you make it? Uh, but see, here we are uh, with the real word, with the real gospel of the kingdom of God, and we are declaring the kingdom of God in the earth. Uh, the demonstration of the kingdom, what he says now, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is a hand. Now, verse 8 is simply showing the demonstration of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you know, sure, we know we'll all understand it better by and by. We'll all, when, we, when we all get to heaven, well, I, that, that's all right. Thank God there's no sickness or anything there. But Jesus taught us to pray as in earth, so as in heaven, so be in earth. So now here, the demonstration of the kingdom of God. We're not just called to preach it. Now, now, now listen to me. I say that because... And some people take that and run with it, uh, and, and they forget about the preaching, and they want to go straight into the uh, into the healing of the sick, the cleansing of the leper, the raising of the dead, casting out devils, and they f forget about the preaching of the gospel. We should never forget about preaching an entrance into the kingdom of God. How is that entrance? Well, we got to go to do that. We've got to go back to... Uh, John 3 and find Nicodemus where he said uh, where he's asking Jesus what I've got to do to inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said you got to be born again and you're born again you can enter into the kingdom of God. So uh, if you've been born again and entered into the kingdom of God don't shut the door on somebody else because you're in now. Uh, continue to allow that door to be open. And as you preach the kingdom of God, expect the healing of the sick. I'm expecting today, as we preach on this live broadcast, I'm expecting today uh, for there to be people that hear and are healed. I'm expecting for there to be those that are, uh, the cleansing of the leper could be both spiritual and physically. Uh, Jesus healed the leper, the physical healing healing of the leper, those that had um, the, that, that horrible skin and uh, disease that was eating away their body, their body parts, and Jesus healed. But there's also an inward healing that needs to be done there. Because sometimes we are uh, creation. Mankind has been uh, spotted with leprosy of, of, of a spiritual kind that has eaten away at our very, the fiber of our souls, the fiber of our uh, spirit, our, our, our spirits and try to separate us from God. Just like we're talking about um, Mr. Horowitz who's, uh, who's teaching and showing how they systematically are trying to, uh, to stop Christianity. I'm going to tell you, they're not going to do it because his kingdom will stand against the gates of hell. That's another message, uh, but I, I feel like it's worth saying uh, that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now let's go to 1 Timothy, the first chapter, uh, and start with about the 15th verse. He says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Now that, Paul speaking to Timothy here, and he says, this is the purpose Jesus came into the world, to save sinners, okay, uh, of whom I am chief. He, he identifies with those sinners because of his background, because he, being a Pharisee, had went about to, to destroy uh, the, the, the church and those that were, that were believers, and God converted him. Uh, how about, uh, for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern. Now, you know you have to you have to see we 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 read it and we don't realize the time span that 
Saul of Tarsus, who, who Paul was before he became Paul, uh, had, had persecuted, had uh, come against the church. But here, uh, for a pattern showing the mercy of God, the long-suffering mercy of God that was on them. Now, somebody's listening to me. You, God's been long-suffering to you. God has... Uh, God has waited on you, but now there is a drawing. There's a calling. I still feel it deep in my spirit right now. There's a drawing. There's a calling. There's uh, drawing you unto Him. Uh, I, I started to use the word repentance, but we have such a negative view of repentance. Repentance just means changing your direction, changing your mind, changing <clears throat> your way of thinking. Uh, when He said repentance to those Pharisees, those that were uh, there at Jesus' baptism, uh, he was uh, he was talking about from that old uh, that old covenant that old mosaic law unto uh, the uh, the understanding of law and grace okay uh, of, of grace and mercy okay now verse seventeen says now unto the King eternal immortal invisible the only wise God now, who who are we talking about Hallelujah we're talking about Jesus. The only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Uh, see, Jesus came. Je Jesus functioned in the earth. And he was the pattern son. So Jesus functioned in the earth, was prophet, was priest. I may come back sometime and break all these down and look at each, the way he fulfilled all this. But he's prophet, priest, and king. Now, every aspect of the kingdom of God involves uh, walking in Every aspect of who Jesus uh, was, uh, walk in the aspect of of him being a prophet in the earth. Uh, that that prophetic anointing, and we'll go into that. Uh, don't know if I'll make it this time, but we may just touch on a little bit of it. Uh, but that prophet in the earth is still functioning uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, he was prophet. Uh, he was priest. Uh, the scripture says a priest after the order of Melchizedek, without beginning and end of days, so forth. And so here uh, we, we understand now uh, that what did Melchizedek, we've been talking lately and I, the thoughts have been coming in to me. Uh, Melchizedek served Abraham uh, bread and wine. Now I'm sure that was for Abraham was a natural thing. But I'm, I'm, I am so relatively sure that when Abraham began to sit down there uh, at Melchizedek, who was, I, I believe, a physical man, it was the, Jesus was a type of Jesus, but I believe he was a physical man. Uh, some say uh, uh, could have been Sham, uh, the, was still alive after the after Noah, and I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, but I'm going to. I think it was a physical man, but, but he was served him uh, bread and wine. Now, this Melchizedek that we serve, this, this uh, a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, is now still serving uh, bread and wine. He's serving spirit. Wine is uh, symbolic of the spirit of the living God that lives in us. I feel it today. I feel the power of the spirit uh, moving and he's serving. I, I, I pray to God we can serve what's been given unto us, that bread and wine that's been given unto us. The bread, Jesus is that bread of life. So now uh, we begin to eat, just like just like Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep, uh, just like Melchizedek fed Abraham. Uh, hallelujah. And it was, uh, Abraham was so moved that he, he paid 10% of all that he had. Uh, not out of a legalistic mindset, but he paid um, he, he paid that tithe to, to Melchizedek because he was so thankful for the bread and wine that he got. Today, you and I are eating the bread and wine, the true bread and wine of the Spirit. And I want you and I today to, to uh, be thankful for what God has given us and stir. It's time to stir up the gifts of God in the church. We have a mission, church. We have a calling. We have an unction uh, from the Father, hallelujah, to, uh, to, to touch creation. So right here today, will you 
uh, just begin to reach out, begin to open up. God, here I am, use me, and let me be a part of what you're doing in the earth. See, uh, now I, I want to go, I'm not, we're, we're getting close to running out of time, so I'm going to, I want to take the rest of this time today, and we'll come back uh, on our, on our uh, if you're listening in the lineage timeline that we're in, instead of just the, the, uh, the videos, it'll be Monday around 12.30 uh, again, but uh, but stay with us because Cheryl, Cheryl hopefully will be back next Wednesday and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into some of the teaching that God's doing. But I'm telling you, I really feel like, church, we need to get about the Father's business. And I still feel such passion for the church. And I still feel such passion for the, the, the creation that's crying out for a manifestation of the sons of God. And we need to stir ourselves. We will we'll come back to Ephesians 4 uh, the next time. And we're going to look at a, a, another mission of the church that many of us will identify with. The mission of the church uh, to, to mature and perfect the saints. And I believe that we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of what God's doing and what God wants to minister um, through us. You know, there's no... God doesn't have another vehicle, church. We, we are, the scripture says, the church is the pillar and ground of truth. And the only way for creation to be free, the only way for you and I to be free, is to know the truth. The truth comes in the form of a man. That man's called Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm going to tell you by the power of the Spirit here today, I want you to reach out right now, will you? I want you to pray with me as we get ready to close the broadcast. And I want you to believe God. I want you to ask God to stir up the gift of God within you. I've been, I remember years ago whenever, uh, you know, when I was a little Baptist boy. <laughs> uh, don't mean that derogatory at all. If you're Baptist, I love you. Uh, through, through the Baptist, I, I grew and got strong enough in the Lord and got baptized in the Holy Ghost and, and uh didn't fit exactly anymore like uh, like I used to, but uh, it moved on. But but I'll, they'd always come back uh, and and <clears throat> talk about uh, are you cold and indifferent on God? Well, sad to say, I I believe there's a lot of people uh, more in a lukewarm state than they are cold and indifferent. They're uh, sometimes cold and indifferent. We recognize a lot quicker than we do just that lukewarmness. Uh, you know, the scripture says in the book of Revelation that if you're lukewarm, uh, he'll spew you out of his mouth. There's, uh, he can't use us as a mouthpiece. So let's, let's get serious about what God wants to do and get in with God's mission and we'll see what God can do. I'm going to pray with you. And if you need to be stirred up, stir up the gift of God in you. Scripture says, stir up that gift of God in you. And right here today, God's going to stir you up. And I believe in saying, stir me, God, stir me. Nobody's watching. I can't even see you on the, uh, on the screen. But God sees you. And God knows the complacency. God knows the, the, the place where you are. Sometimes I get there. But there's a desire to fulfill the missions of God that God has given unto us and to go into all the earth to edify the body of Christ and I'm uh, still wanting to go back to Ephesians 4 but we'll we'll come back uh, on the next broadcast and do it some justice Father in the name of Jesus right now as we close this broadcast don't let anybody just turn this off and, and not respond to you Father I ask you Lord by your spirit God you're there to receive to, to, to draw into yourself to, to heal, save, deliver, do all those things that you said you would do to the, for those that believe. And Father, in the name of Jesus right now, God, we call upon the name of the Lord. We call for salvation, not just initial salvation. Thank God for that initial salvation, that initial born again. But any area of our life today that's not fulfilled in you, that's not fulfilling your mission, we ask you to heal us from, we ask you to anoint us, to move forward by the power of the Spirit. 
And we give you glory. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Respond and let us know you you were watching. Uh, also, if you can, share with us an offering in uh, P.O. Box 1007, Cedartown, Georgia, 30125. I love you. And uh, we're going to keep bringing this, me this message forward, preaching the kingdom, preaching the gospel, the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the saving power of God. We love you and God bless. Hello and welcome to the broadcast today.